new DJM 900 Nexus is our replacement for the popular DJM 800 Club Mixer and adds the Pro DJ Link connectivity, updated quantize effects, and superior connectivity with software. The 800 has probably been around for about five years now, and it's been sort of the industry standard mixer, um, as far as I'm concerned. I think it's lasted really well, like, uh, you know, the effects and uh, the sort of layout and everything, it's all, uh, yeah, pretty ergonomic and easy to understand. A lot of people can get on and uh, use it straight away, even if they've never used it before. The Nexus name is our commitment to making the perfect system for every type of DJ. And to start with, it's Tractor Certified. The original setup um, before the DJM 900 came along was uh, two laptops, one running machine, and one running tractor, two Audio 8 sound cards. Now with the new mixer, it makes it a lot easier. Now I can just have one laptop, running machine, and tractor. So it's totally halved my setup. And also now, not having the sound card, to having to plug the sound card in and stuff, I can just come in, plug the USB straight in. and. My DJ setup now consists of two CDJ 2000s, one DJM 900, uh, an iPad, a MacBook with Ableton Live on, a Korg Nanopad, a Korg Chaosolator, and an EFX 1000. I also use the 900 as a control surface, I use the Nanopad as a control surface, and my iPad as a control surface, all in Ableton. The four channel 24 bit 96K sound card and full MIDI control integrates the mixer with high tech DJ tools. People, if they're using Tractor or Ableton, they can just plug straight in. You know, all their drivers and everything can be customized before they go to the club. We've added a new touch sensitive X pad to the beat effects, which brings rhythmic expression and instant effects triggering to your fingertips. There's five insanely high quality beat effects too, with a studio style reverb, the beat mashing slip roll, the madness of spiral and a sidechain innovation of melodic. The color effects have been expanded from four to six with the new dub echo, space, noise, and with studio style dynamics of the gate and compressor. So let's start out with the color effects, which are available on all four channels and independently controllable. Well, the whole thing about the mix, I just love the whole layer. I love the, the filters are just for me, you know, one of the best you can get, you know. I've always been obsessed with the high pass and the low pass filter on it because it's, it's the main part of the way I mix. Well, obviously there's some uh, nice new color effects on there, like the space, which is great for creating builds and like just splashing out snares and, and, and bright frequencies. Um, that's also a post fader effect, along with the dub echo, which is also a post fader effect. Drop the fader and the effect still bleeds. The same with the space effect. And of course, you can punch them in and out. So if I grab a, a nice high sounding snare, get a nice long tail on it. Low pass and high pass. The color effects are, you know, push the button, turn the dial, something happens straight away. Whereas the beat effects are more rhythmical, you've got more parameters to play with. But it's using them both together really, that's, you know, that's the key in that mixer. The new firmware 4.0 for the CDJ2000 and CDJ900 sends record box beat grid information to the DJM900 beat effects, making it an essential update. The DJM900 sends on-air status back to the CDJs, so when you push up the fader, the CDJ2000 platter assigned to that channel turns from white to red, so you know that it's live on air. Yeah, it's really easy to update the CDJs. Um, I do it in clubs all the time. You know, even when the person before you is playing, it takes literally two minutes and 15 seconds. So you can update the player while their last track is playing and be ready to go. Once you've updated to that firmware, everything will work perfectly in sync with the 900, so all your quantized stuff will work. You just plug a, a LAN hub into the back of the mixer and plug your CDJs into that with some LAN cables. I've got this on wide pitch. I've got my scratch sound over here. I'm going to use the transform effect, which is timed and quantized to this deck. Now watch what happens if I move the pitch. The effect stays in time. Uh, the X-Pad, it's just, um, it's like an XY-Pad, but just one axis, it's like super simple, it's kind of a touch ribbon, ribbon thing. On the 800, you'd get your beat bar button, set it to the right measure, 
um, on whatever particular effect. So you're doing the roll, you'd set it to an eighth, or um, you know, if you wanted to repeat one bar, you'd set it to that. But with the touch ribbon, you just you know, you literally just touch it in a corresponding place, and uh, straight away it's engaged. You don't need to actually engage the effect with a yellow button. As soon as you touch the, the strip, the effect's engaged. So the roll, as on the previous mixer, works in the same way, except now you can control it with the X pad. And what I like to do is uh, use it to do little fills or little breakdowns and combine it with some of the color effects here. Like that one. So you make your own little breakdowns and then you can just take little sections with the roll so we get those little snares the next time they come around. So you make your own little breakdowns and uh, with this uh, gate compression it's uh, really good fun. Taken from the DJM 2000, the slip roll is a great effect for beat mashing a track without repeating the same sample. So the slip roll constantly resamples every time you make an adjustment to the timing. They have sampled a new part of the beat. And now all the roll effects are post fader so you can do the sound color effect. I like to walk my fingers across it. One, two, three, four. Just to make these little fills on the drops. One, two, three, four. Just like the DJM 800, the 900's roll effect can be used to perform with loops, but now with the stability of beat grid quantizing. Now that we're using the roll and it's quantized, I can time some scratching to this deck and loop it in time. So two bars. It stays in time. And of course, it's all post faders as well. Dub echo. The reverb's totally different. I mean, the whole sound of it's completely different. And also, because you've got the X pad now, you can control. Um, the frequency of the reverb, and then with the beat bar buttons, you control the size of the reverb. So you control the room size, or you know, sort of, or how big the reverb sounds. Um, so you can whack the frequency up, get a high pitch reverb. Um, you know, again, post fader. So if you take your finger off, you're going to get that tail that bleeds into the track. Um, and with that tail, or if you turn the depth all the way around and cut the original source, you know, you just are left with the, the tail on its own. You can change the room size and get that weird sort of pitching effect. Um, you know, it's brought the reverb way up to date. It's, uh, it's massively improved on any previous reverbs that have been on Pioneer mixers. So we've got a nice high pitched tail there. And if I just show you control the uh, room size with the beat bar buttons or with the uh, the timing knob there. So. Well the spiral is a little bit mental but uh, it's great fun. It's kind of a, the rock band effect. So the spiral is like a tape delay that's gone bananas and uh, it sounds a bit like this. It's pretty gnarly. He 
can chop it in and out with a level deck. And it records it in. The melodic effect is a sampler which responds to the peaks of the underlying music. It was the one effect I thought, what? How do you use this effect, you know, in a useful way? Um, but I just persevered with it and mucked around with it. And I think that uh, <laughs> for me, even though it was kind of the most awkward one to get to grips with at first, it was kind of, uh, um, you know, the most satisfying to use in the end and uh, the most interesting. To get the melodic effect, sounding quite funky. We get the cowbell, we snatch it with the yellow button, but then I switch to the X-pad straight away and uh, change the pattern. And what I can do now, make it melodic by changing the pitch, with the beat bar buttons, or the timing knob. do as I've got my uh, sound color effects on this channel and this channel and if I change the channel just bleed the uh, effect into the other channel it just picks up a little tail of the effect now if I go all the way down keep my finger on there I can actually turn this off Use the dub echo as well. Channel select back onto this channel, should remember the pattern. Along with all these new effects, the DJM900 Nexus has also adopted some features from the DJM2000, like our best audio circuits yet operating at 32-bit. The output I've noticed a lot is a big improvement from the 800 to the 900. The 900 Nexus includes the Q-Link, which is an additional preview channel dedicated to monitoring new tracks from Rekordbox directly to your headphones. We've added the isolator EQing so you can switch from classic to kill. The 900 Nexus will be even more reliable with sturdy new fader technology that no longer positions electronics directly under the faceplate opening. And the Pioneer P-Lock fader caps are impossible to pull off in the heat of the mix thanks to a new locking mechanism. Another refinement is all the connections, which are now symmetrically and intuitively arranged so you can easily connect sources blind. The 900 for me is, uh, is better for me because you know, I prefer the effects there the layout I'm used to obviously from the 800 and um, you know along with this, uh, this sort of quantization you know with the beat gridding from record box it um, yeah you know adds a new dimension to the to the way you can use effects <laughs> 